Hi and welcome to a CDH tournament gameplay video with the time Blue Farm, Verna and Bjorn and Cisse. This was a European webcam online tournament called Pantheon, organized by Chaos. The starting player is Namato, playing Absantayam. This is a build focused around Devoted Druid and stacks cards like Archon of Amira, Avid Mind Sensor and Edison Canonist. You're putting a punch of plus one plus one counters on your creatures to activate Tayam eventually infinitely. Second in turn order we have Tumna and Krom from Tremnik, also known by Ignasi. He is adding Delny into the mixture that is synergizing great with Lofo, Dockside, Esper, Orcish Bowmaster, Fairy Mastermind, etc. He is also playing Adnos together with Brain Freeze, Final Fortune, Necropotence, Underworld Breach. Yeah, the typical Tumna Krom stuff. Then we have Luz Neutral who is playing Bjorna and Vernog, a variant to the Tumnacrom, also playing Delny, this time adding Displacer Kitten, Dockside, Displacer Kitten, Teferi. Teferi is also utilizing Mox Amber that can be easily active by the two CMC legendary commanders that you have, as well as Mox Upul to put together that variation of combo. And last in turn order we have Baneslayer88 playing Cisse with 6 different legendary uh, planeswalkers. Then the typical Cisse stuff with Derevi, Dockside, Emil the Blessed, Kinan, Lofo, Sakashima the Imposter that can become a copy of a Dockside Extortionist by activating and putting him directly into play with Cisse. Sometimes you see Cisse builds actually play variations or let's say just add-ons. He's not playing any Underworld Breach nor Necropotence. So he's basically more to the typical CSA stuff with lots of planeswalkers, playing the Nicobolas, Aminatu and Oath of Teferi combo together with Cultist of the Absolute, Chromatic Ore and the Harda Binder of Wills. And with that, let's start this match. Tayam begins the game, Flooded Strand, sacrificing it, finding a scrubland, and then pass the turn. I'm guessing this is gonna be a Vamp Tutor, as it taps for black. Verdant Catacombs from Tremnik, casting a Chromox, imprinting a Wheel of Fortune, making it tap for red. Turn goes to Loose Neutral, a Flooded Strand, sacrificing it for a Tundra, and with that he find he casts a Mystic Remora, and then he passed the turn. Baneslayer Cisse draws a card. This is the person we're all sharing for, remember that. Forbidden Orchard and an Esper Sentinel, giving a 1-1 colorless spirit to Tayam. Post Esper Sentinel he plays a Mana Crypt and then pass to turn 2 Tayam. Tayam plays a Windswept Thief that is Sacrifice. Tumna and Krom also sacrifice the Verdant Catacomb in response but he will not do anything else. No secret op agent. Tumna Krom finds Scrubland and Tayam finds Savannah, and then he casts an Edison Canonist, the rule of law creature, and then he attacks at Tremnik with the spirit that he got from Cisse, and passes the turn. Tumna Krom draws a card for turn. He plays a Bloodstained Mire that he sacrifice to find an underground sea, using that to cast Tumna the Weaver. Luz Neutral pays for the Remora and draws a card for turn. Plays a Verdant Catacombs and a Lotus Petal. He cracks the Verdant Catacombs, finding a Badlands and passing the turn. He is not paying for Esper Sentinel so Cisse draws a card before that and then Cisse gets to untap. He flips but no damage from the Mana Crypt and then draws a card. He plays a Tundra and Cisse. He attacks Lose neutral for one with his Esper Sentinel. Namato draws a card for turn. He plays a basic forest. And he plays Insidious Roots. This is a new enchantment. Creature tokens you control have add one mana of any color. Well, that's good when you gained a token from someone. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a 0 1 green plant creature token. Then put plus one plus one counter on each plant you control. This is a pretty good time tech. He will pay for the Esper Sentinel, but not for the Mystic Remora. Timna Krom is attacking at Luz Neutral, dealing 2 damage to him. Timna loses a life and draws a card, or he also gains 2 life, so net plus 1 total, and draw a card. He plays a Badlands land drop. For a total of 4 mana, Smothering Tight. And both Mystic Remora and Esper Sentinel will draw a card, but from here they have to pay their taxes. Loose Neutral will untap and pay for his Mystic Remora. Then draw a card. Not paying for Smothering Tight, giving a treasure to Timna Krom. 
He plays a Cavern of Souls naming human. He sacrifices a Lotus Petal for a black, and then Cavern of Souls to cast Will the Wise. Or Vernog, depending on who you're asking. Cise grabs a clue. Tyam declines. Tuna Kram with his smoldering tight that can definitely pay for the clues will also investigate. So Vernog gains free close total. And Namato, the Tyam player, loses one life. And then he plays a Lion's Eye Diamond. Not paying for Esper Sentinel and the Smothering Tide creates another treasure. Seisei is in response casting a Worldly Tutor. Not paying for Mystic Remora, giving a Kadra and another treasure. In response, Timnachrom is sacrificing the both treasures and the clue to draw a card. Worldly Tutor then resolves. And honestly, Dockside is pretty good right now. He would generate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 treasures total. And Dockside is exactly what he's finding. Then CC untaps, takes no damage from the mana crypt, and draws the Dockside Extortionist. He plays Polluted Delta, he cracks his Polluted Delta, finding a volcanic island. And then he casts Dockside. In response to Dockside ETB, we're cracking both treasures from Ignasi, the Tremnik, the Tymna Kron player. And it looks like we're actually sacrificing Lions of Diamond too. This is super responsible, sending Dockside, Gamble, Dockside, Orcish Bowmaster to his graveyard and generating free blue mana. He's using two of the mana to crack a clue to draw a card, and what he's looking for right now is basically Underworld Breach. I have never seen such a responsible play from a Dockside trigger. This is however generating a treasure for Timnachrom, and Timnachrom also sacrificed that treasure as well, to prevent treasures from the dockside for Cisei. So the total count is 2, 2, 3, which is 7 treasures. He moves to combat, and the mana disappears from the players that sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamonds and treasure in response. He attacks with Cisei and Esper Sentinel, both at Ignasi, Timnachrom, dealing 3 damage to Timnachrom, and then he passes. Well, he can activate CC in instant speed, so we're playing Gavany Township as land drop for Tyam. This is an amazing land for Tyam that can put counters on all creatures he controls. And he costs Tyam. But in the end step, CC is sacrificing a treasure and tapping a land to cast a Aladamri's Call. He couldn't do this previous turn because of Edison Canonist, so he has to play one spell each turn, one by one. Esper Sentinel draws a card, and Timnachrom creates a treasure because of this. The call resolves. Now he could find Emil the Blessed, but this would put a big target on his head, so a good question what he's actually going to find. Orcish Bowmaster could be an interesting choice, considering there are cadre effects here and there, as well as Kinnan to boost up his Cisei's power, but also makes his treasures double activate Cisei, which would also equal into a Pretty good win, but he is finding Colossal Sky Turtle. This is a very interesting creature that is basically interaction, but also return so he could bounce his Dockside to recast Dockside, or if they kill Dockside, return Dockside back to his hand, or if he needs to interact with one of his other opponents. It's a pretty all around good player choice. It is kind of indicating that he's trying to be responsive to other opponents also playing in that adaptive speed, something he is very good at doing, but also being able to redo a dockside again. So I have to say I really like the play of choosing that creature, because a big mistake would potentially be to find Emil the Blessed and become the target, but this is still actually winning on his next turn, but not putting a threat on his head, but also being able to interact if he needs to. There is currently some table talk considering Tumna, so Tumna Krom wants to attack at Namanato, but Namato could potentially block with Tyam and just kill Tymna. But uh, is Namanato going to need Tymna to deal with Baneslayer? That's the discussion they are currently having. While Baneslayer is saying that avoiding some, you shouldn't give people Kadra, but Namanato consider and Ignasi as well that Baneslayer might be a big threat. But before anything, we're casting Snap back on the Ediswan Canonist, giving a Kadra to the Espers to the Mystic Rumora and Esper Sentinel. Here's the interesting part, if they both actually draw here, then this snapback was basically free to cast considering Smothering Tight. But still, you're giving away Kadra. 
Loose Neutral doesn't draw a card to prevent treasure generation for Timnacrom, but CZ is responding with a force of will protecting the Edison Cannonist for Tyam, pitching Oath of Teferi, a combo piece for him. Mystic Remora draws a card because of force of will, giving a treasure to Timnacrom. Timna attacks and gains two, lose one, draw a card. And then he costs the one ring giving him protection as it resolves and then follows up with a wishclaw talisman giving a card draw to the mystic remora player and a treasure for timnacrom and then finally he passes his turn he is letting the mystic remora die believing that if he taps out all his free mana and pass turn with that he is going to lose to all the potential win attempts that's gonna come up soon. As he draws a card, he's giving a treasure to the Smothering Tide trigger. He's playing Bjorna Nightfall Alchemist or Lucas. And then Mox Opal. Don't pay for his Sentinel, CC is drawing a card and Tynacrom is generating a treasure. And then he costs a Mana Crypt. CC goes to her turn, untaps, lose zero life to Mana Crypt and draws a card, giving a treasure to Tynacrom as he draws the card. Place a scrubland land drop. And then CZ mysteriously passes the turn. Tyam draws a card. Tyam plays Evolution Sage whenever land enters the battlefield under your control. Proliferate. Pretty good with Tyam. He plays a Misty Rainforest. He will pro proliferate. He sacrificed the Misty Rainforest. Finding a Bayou. This will trigger the landfall. In response, the Wandering taps to draw a card. And... Lose neutral, sacrifice a clue, drawing a card. So much stuff people are just doing for a landfall trigger. Tyam then costs Ashnod's Altar. This is an artifact that he can use to sacrifice creatures to generate mana. Ashnod's Resolve. But here, Tyam believes he can't really win from this position, and I think I have to agree, so he passes the turn. So, Timnacrom untaps. He loses one life to the Wandering and draws a card. He plays a Marsh Flats. Fetching. Finding a Tundra. He taps the ring to draw two cards. He will sacrifice a treasure to activate the Wishclaw. Searching his library. Giving the Wishclaw to Tyam. Finding a card. And then Toxic Deluge. This is a board wipe, but also a potential a win attempt. Or well, a win cleanup. Because he needs to get rid of that Edis 1 Canonist like he tried last turn, but it's also going to make sure that uh, Cisei doesn't get to win or Tyam either, as their board states will be cleaned out. He is paying 6 life into the Toxic, making sure everything goes away. He is also paying for the Esper Sentinel trigger. Cisei is responding with an Cisei activation, using 4 lands and 1 treasure. Cisei resolves with her search as a 2 2, finding 0 or 1 but you will be able to tutor again. He finds Cultist of the Absolute. This is gonna boost CC up to a 6-6 having a secondary activation. It's gonna be easier to find other things. Like Ertai, the Resurrected. And with Ertai, I predict that uh, she can active, interact and stop the Toxic. And then he searches again. One thing he could do is find anything that is not a creature that would make CC grow above 6, so to make sure that CC actually survives Toxic. He would only lose basically Dockside in response to this in that case. So CC activation number 2 resolves. Now CC have basically two options, either find Eretai to counterspell the Toxic, or find a Planeswalker that will survive the Toxic, and also boost CC, making CC actually survive the Toxic. However, if CC survives and the Toxic resolves, Edison Swan Cannonist still dies, which means that if Timnacrom has to win through the rule of law effect, she can start going for it. So there are some values to both decisions here. It should also be mentioned that with Cultist of the Absolute, CC have to be sacrificed at the beginning of his turn because he doesn't have any other creatures, and that's a condition that comes with the Cultist of the Absolute Enchantment. But he finds Sakashima the Imposter. This is coming into play as a Dockside Extortionist. Now this is the beautiful thing. If this is generating enough treasures, then he can activate once more, find Emil and start flickering Dockside. And in this situation, 
win in instant speed with the toxic deluge still on the stack never basically resolving and uh, looking at the board state there's a pretty high count of different artifacts around it we have one two three from namato we have a bunch from timnakram and loose neutral who is by the way actually sacrificing a clue to reduce the count giving a treasure to Timnakram. Now on the dockside ETB, there's a very interesting situation here for Namato. He could sacrifice the Edison Canonist to reduce the dockside count, but also giving the ability to Timnakram to start activating as well. But then comes the problem that suddenly Timnakram could be attempting to win the game as well. On the other hand, uh, Baneslayer is like currently winning in instant speed on the stack. So it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't situations. Namato will lose the game if he sacrificed that is one Canonist, or if he doesn't sacrifice the Canonist. But a higher EVO play of win or surviving, might be the better word, might be to sacrifice that is one Canonist. This actually creates a political discussion. So, Namato decides to not sacrifice Edis 1 Canonist if Baneslayer won't find Emil the Blessed and instead find Ertai. With Ertai, we can counterspell the Toxic Deluge and not win. So, Bane is now making the deal to not find Emil and find Ertai to counterspell the Toxic Deluge. So, on Dockside ETB, Tumnakram sacrifice all the treasures to reduce the treasure count that Baneslayer is going to get. Dockside after this generates a total of 8 treasures and this is enough to activate Cisse and then activate Emil if he would, but he won't. We're sacrificing 5 of those to activate Cisse once more. Oh, he's actually doing something completely kinda different. Teferi Mage of Salfir. This has flash. Creature cards you own that aren't in play have flash. Each opponent can't play spells only anytime he or she could play a sorcery. So this is not Ertai. This is not going to counterspell the Toxic Deluge yet. This is both giving him instant speed access, but also denying people from basically interacting in instant speed. And then he costs a Phyrexian Metamorph in instant speed thanks to this uh, creature. So this is going to enter as a third Dockside. Clones are good! So he gains another 8 treasures, which puts him to 10 treasures total and potential 2 CC activations. And then he puts a CC search on the stack. He finds Kinnan, which is going to increase his uh, CC activations even more. And then he sacrifices 5 treasures for double Wooburg, having 10 mana, 2 of each and consumes one of each to activate CC once. CC can now literally find anything, like Chromatic Array, that can tap and basically generate a secondary CC activation. And then he uses the other search, and now we're finally finding Ertai, that is going to counterspell the Toxic Deluge. Timnakram draws a card because of Ertai, and now because Canonist is still in play, he can only cast artifacts. And Cise still have an Cise activation because of Chromatic Array. He does play a Lotus Petal though. And he passes the turn to Lose Neutral. Lose Neutral untaps. He takes no damage from the Mana Crypt. And then draws a card for turn. He casts a Mox Amber and pays for Esper Sentinel. He then casts a Path of Exile on Teferi. Trying to kill it. So that Ignasi, Timnakram and other people can basically gain access to instant speed active interaction. Because the fairy is locking that out. But in response we are activating Cise by tapping Chromatic Array. As I know Baneslayer's list, I'm guessing that he's going to find Cis, uh, the Segarda something that gives everything he has hexproof to protect uh, the fairy here. However, he's actually channeling the Colossal Sky Turtle to bounce his own dockside. But in response we are sacrificing more or less the entire board state from Tyam to generate a bunch of mana and then he's putting some Tyam activations on the stack. And he also has free mana in floating. Tyam resolves, Code of Calling, a Yisan and a Swift Reconfiguration. He's getting back the Evolution Sage that has the Landfall ability 
that will basically proliferate whenever land comes into play. He is also creating a plant token because of his enchantment. However, in response to the Insidious Roots enchantment trigger that is going to create the plant, Baneslayer is casting Swords to Plowshare, trying to dis exile Tayem, so that once the plant comes into play, he can't activate Tayem again. Because time is gone, and time can't currently activate because it doesn't have permanence with counters on them enough to activate again. Swords resolve, time goes away, the plan comes into play, but no time to activate, so nothing happens. Then uh, bounce in Dockside with the Colossal Sky Turtle resolves, and as he's allowed to cast things in instant speed, he is recasting Dockside with uh, his amazing ability from Teferi. But in response, Bjorna is actually activating and sacrificing a mana crypt to reduce the dockside count to kill the Esper Sentinel. He is generating a total of 7 treasures. Take that back. 8 because of Wishclaw Talisman that is tapped under Tyam's control. But with Kinnan this is basically uh, 2 CC activations. As he is cracking 5 to gain 10 mana and then he is activating CC. Here he can find Emil the Blessed. And with Dockside and Emil, he can generate infinite mana. With Kinnan and infinite mana, he can activate Kinnan infinitely. Finding Orcish Bowmaster with his Kinnan and then with Emil and Orcish Bowmaster, he has infinite damage. Cissé wins the match! With a lot of Cissé chain tricks.